It was, you know, a really, really cool victory in her last match on stream. So, uh, yeah, let's just get into this matchup, see how both players approach this first game. I am so excited to see this match. And Alex sending out that Lapras. Andy Moog is right away. Tegan with that Grimstarl and that Rotom Heat to start here. So what's interesting here is that, you know, Tegan can set up Light Screen and Reflect through Grimmsnarl, and then Alex can also set up Light Screen and Reflect through just, you know, Gigantamax Lapras with that resonance. And so, okay, I think, uh, you know, Tegan here really just pushing the pedal immediately. And I actually really like this option, right? The ability to try to just knock out the Amoongus immediately, get that out of the way. Uh, Rotom Heat's also going to be faster than the Lapras. And so if you are able to set up that Sun, you'll survive a Max Geyser in return. So, uh, don't, you know, you don't necessarily need to set up Light Screen on turn one here if you don't think you're going to get KO'd anyway. And, you know, this Grimstar has a lot of good utility, especially with that Fake Tears, which put in a lot of work in the last set we saw Tegan play. Plus, yesterday, that Amoongus putting in a lot of work for Alex, so mm -hmm. surely Stephen wants to take that out right away here. I mean, we'll have to see if she manages to pick up this KO. Amoongus is so bulky, and despite Rotom Heat hitting hard, if this Amoongus doesn't get dealt with, it could be problematic here. So the Rotom Heat, of course, is going to go ahead and Dynamax. Then for Alex, also opting to go for that Gigantamax Lapras to start off the match here. And the name of the game yesterday for Alex was really, you know, out bulking and, and just really uh, trying to get that screen up early and then put in a lot of damage. Uh, now the problem for him in yesterday's matchup was that the Zacian wasn't able to do actually be in a safe position. So I think you want to try to stall out the Rotom's Dynamax here uh, and then bring out that Zacian, use that Lapras to deal with Rotom and then use Zacian for this late game. That Among Us here, not really, <laughs> not recognizing that Tegan wants to be trying to take it out, putting itself in harm's way with the Rage Powder, the Fake Tears connecting to drop its special defense, and <laughs> that uh, hitting Max Flare hitting into it and setting the sun, and this Among Us is just going to be taken out right away here. G-Max Persona, it's going to be connecting with that Grimmsnarl, setting up the Aurora Veil. I mean, on Alex, you definitely don't want to see your Amoongus going down at first turn, but being able to get up that Aurora Veil to start out bulking, as you said, the other team, is going to be really nice in these upcoming turns here. Yeah, I just wonder if that trade-off's actually worth it at the end of the day. You know, one thing to actually note about Tegan's Rotom is I believe it's that safety goggles as well. So Amoongus was, was already in a tricky spot to begin with. And uh, I think one thing that Alex might have wanted to cover for was something like a fake tears and a max lightning into that Lapras slot, for example. So now the screens are up. Uh, the Grimstar keeps putting on pressure with fake tears, but I'm not even sure like a fake tears and a max lightning is going to KO the Lapras, especially given that the uh, resonance is up right now. So uh, I, I think, you know, Tegan, definitely content with the start of this game but one thing that's scary once again is this uh zashian that's waiting in the back on alex's side of the field right uh we see the reggie Lecky come out right now i think zashian surely is going to be the fourth pokemon and alex's goal i think in this early game is to just get damage across the board so that zashian can come out in this end game and just secure knockout so tegan really wants to snowball this as quickly as possible and just pick up another ko ideally as quickly as she can yeah, Electro Web from this Reggie Alecki to be getting a little bit of speed control here. And we'll have to see how much this Rotom does. Lapras does get to move first, though, with that Max Geyser. Going to be hitting into that Rotom with the Sun out, not really dealing too much damage here, but does get the opportunity to override the Weather Gear, setting the rain up. Max Lightning coming out, hitting into the Lapras. It's going to do a sizable amount of damage, especially after that fake tears, but with that Aurora Veil up it is nowhere close to being able to take this KO here. Yeah, so it's really essential to get, you know, the Aurora Veil up as early as uh, Alex was able to. So what's awkward about this next turn is, you know, there's that Electro Web from Regieleki, so you can keep dropping Rotom speed and then now that the rain is up, uh, you know, you can just go for Electro Web and a Max Geyser onto Rotom. I'm curious if that's actually enough to pick up the KO. I, I think it should be, to be honest, with the rain being up. You see Grimstar here is opting for that Reflect, basically trying to set Tegan up to deal with that Zashi and that Alex is going to have in the back for uh, his end game here. So, you know, Tegan got on the board with an early knockout, but, uh, you know, we've seen the restricted Pokemon from both players. It's Palky on Tegan's end, it's Zashian on Alex's end. Zashian just feels 
substantially stronger, but I really like this max guard play here from Tegan Zen. Mm -hmm. Of course, we saw on the menu the max guard and the reflect. Now it's time to see what Alex does. Going for that thunderbolt into the Rotom, looking to get some damage. Double targeting into that Rotom. So with that max guard, gets to stay safe and <laughs> Dynamax is done now. So both of these Pokemon returning to their original forms and Rotom's still a little slow with that Electro Web drop earlier, but still gets to stick around for another turn. Yeah, there's Ferrothorn and Palkia in the back. I mean, what's uh, tricky here is once again, a late game Zacian with that attack boost is so scary. Now at least you have the Grimmsnarl to like mitigate some of those boosts. Uh, Alex right now actually in a pretty commanding offensive position and this is just, you know, kind of the, the thing with Grim Snarl. It's not doing that much damage if it's not super effective damage. You can, you know, get a little bit of chip and lower special attack with Spirit Breaks. But uh, right now, I think Alex in a position to really get a lot of damage on the board and start clawing kind of a comeback after losing a Pokemon on turn one. Mm -hmm. Protect coming out on the Lapras. Grim Snarl, of course, setting up that light screen. Reggie Alecki here is just going to go for that Thunderbolt, connecting with the Grimmsnarl and picking up that KO here. So. And I think uh, what makes this kind of tricky was the, the fact Rotom set up that electric terrain, right? So Reggie Alecki actually gets to capitalize off it, do even more damage with these Thunderbolts. Now, you have the light screen and the reflect up at least, but uh, the Reggie Alecki can continue to lower the speed. And oh, Tegan considering an ally switch here. Okay, that's an interesting option. Uh, you know, Sierra, we kind of talked about this yesterday, but it's there's so many mind games, especially if you know your opponent actually has ally switch. That actually could make things even trickier for both sides. <laughs> Yeah, open team sheets, at least if it's a closed sheet tournament, you don't know if the ally switch is coming, but seeing that down on paper and knowing that it's a possibility, it'll be interesting to see how Alex like responds here because at the same time, you don't want to be over predicting and start targeting into the wrong slot trying to call the ally switch, but at the same time, you have to respect it a little bit too. Yeah, exactly. I think from Alex's side, I mean, Electro Web is a safe option, right? It covers the ally switch and oh, it's going to be Zacian coming in. We got a sneak preview of what Palkia is going for this turn. And I think like, I mean, if it's an Electro Web here, you, you not only avoid, uh, you know, any shenanigans with that ally switch, you get a guaranteed speed drop onto the Palkia. So let's see what the Reggie Lecky opted for. It is going to be Electro Web. Yeah. Oh, but Palkia, Palkia avoid <laughs> the double miss here. Electro Web not able to connect with either Ooh. so <laughs> that was a that was a big opportunity to get some more speed control happening unfortunately reggie alecki not having the greatest day out here and is unable to get those electro webs landed yeah and the other thing was spatial ren into the zashi and what a fantastic switch there by alex to not take any damage i mean rotom plus palkia they were exerting a lot of offensive pressure in that moment, but I mean, the Electro Web Mist definitely unfortunate, but I think Alex is still happy about that. Getting in that Zacian on a turn where a Spatial Red was coming out. Thunderbolt there still does a very good amount of damage despite the light screen being up. Palkia on the closing side, just opting to go oh. for the Earth Power instead, but Reggie Alecki not, <laughs> just not going anywhere, holding on, and of course, Zacian with the Protect will stay safe from that Will-O-Whisper another turn. That was a <laughs> Reggie Alecki just holding on there though. That was really close, but <laughs> holding on to live another turn here. Yeah, and that's all you need, right? It makes all the difference here. Uh, and so now the electric terrain is gone, right? So Reggie Alecki's Thunderbolt or any, any electric type attack is obviously going to do less damage. It looks like Thunderbolt wasn't even a 2 hit KO onto that Palky anyway. Getting a burn onto Zashian would be really, really nice. I think one way Tegan can win this game is you burn the Zashian and then Ferrothorn is, it effectively seals up the game because it's just so bulky. There's not enough damage from Alex's side. We know that Lapras also doesn't have something like a Parish Song. So uh, you can see why Tegan's fishing for those Will-O-Wisps. Now the question I have is, does the double up from Alex's side, a Sacred Sword and a Thunderbolt KO Rotom? If not, it looks like this is what Alex is considering. You switch into Lapras uh, and basically try to stall out screens a little bit more because you really, really, really don't want that Zacian to get burned right now. A switch from Tegan's end as well. Switching into that Ferrothorn. The Reggie Lucky going for that Thunderbolt. Just dealing a little bit of chip here onto the Rotom. It will connect the Will-O-Wisp this time, but... I mean, with that switch in from Alex's end, a Burnt Lapras is, I mean, it's taking a little bit of chip damage, but it's its not really gonna be doing too much other than that. So 
the Pharaoh Thorn here, looking to possibly start getting set up to start like building up an endgame here. Yeah, the only tricky thing is Zacian has that Sacred Sword, and Sacred Sword is pretty much the best attack you can have on Zacian in dealing with an Iron Defense Ferrothorn because you ignore those defense boosts. So it was really, really critical that Alex did not let that Zacian get burnt because I think if Zacian gets burnt there, uh, this Ferrothorn actually looks like he could potentially win the matchup just by itself, 1v3. But because Alex was able to conserve that Zacian, switch it back out, you know, you're also slowly stalling out the screen's turns. This Rotom does not have Protect, nor does it have Recovery through something like a citrus berry so every little bit of damage onto it matters and so you can see how alex is basically trying to chip away at it because alex recognizes his win condition is zashi and let's not burn it <laughs> rotom taking a thunderbolt but then also dealing one out going to pick up the ko on the reggie aleki here lapras going for that hydro pump it is going to connect and Surely is going to pick up the KO on the Rotom, and the Rotom is going down. So this Zashade in the back is going to be safe from that will o -Wisp pressure. Ferrothorn going for the Iron Defense. As you said, the Zashian with that Sacred Sword, I mean, isn't really going to... The Iron Defense won't help it necessarily in that sense, but it will help building up the amount of damage it can deal out with that body press it has. Yeah, exactly. I, I just can't help but wonder if, from Tegan's perspective, you know, uh, I can see why she, you know, Thunderbolt is the Aleki, guaranteed to knock out onto that, you... But it's tough, because I, I feel like Ferrothorn, if it were a 2v1, right, with Ferrothorn and Palkia, you could maybe win against the Zashian alone, but uh, it, it's definitely tricky there, because, you know, reading into a Lapras Protector makes a lot of sense, you definitely want Aleki out of the field, you don't want to take any more Thunderbolts from it, um, but I was also wondering, yeah, if a Body Press would have been enough to actually KO that Lapras last turn. Given that the uh, resonance was up, I'm guessing probably not, which is why Tegan wanted to just go for that body press immediately. I uh, love the decision to protect the Palkia here, but of course Alex could read into this, right? Uh, this time around you can protect the Lapras and uh, Zashin can go for a Sacred Sword onto Ferrothorn. That would actually more or less, I feel like, seal up the game here, but I think Alex also has to respect Palkia going for an Earth Power onto Zashian, so targeting is going to be very important here. Do either players call the Protect properly from the opposing side? Let's see. I hate that Protect, as you said, coming out. And Lapras also opting to go for the Protect here. Now let's see what the Zashian does. It's going to actually go for a Swords Dance. It's even more of a setup. That Zashian not really feeling threatened at all. Feeling safe to start boosting its attack stat and start being really, really scary. Um, that, was a, that was a big Swords Dance there. <laughs> really scary is probably the best way to describe it. I mean, if right now, like, I... It, it feels so hard to come back from that. That's a game-winning Swords Dance, honestly. And uh, Alex makes the aggressive read, expecting the Palkia to protect there, right? Palkia and Ferrothorn could have doubled up onto Zashin there. You could go for the Earth Power and the Body Press, but uh, that's obviously risky if the Zashin decides to target Palkia outright with the Sacred Sword. But Alex ends up getting this critical sword Dance off now. It's at plus three attack. You know the Palkia protected last turn, so at this point, I think you can just go for a Sacred Sword onto the Palkia. Lapras can get some chip damage onto the Ferrothorn with the Freeze Dry, and then another Sacred Sword should just knock out Ferrothorn for subsequent turn. Yeah, Ferrothorn is so good at cleaning up end games, but I don't think this spiky boy is going to do anything against this sword stance Sashian here. It is going to target into the Palkia, which did go for the Protect, um, doubling into that Palkia Protect, actually, and Ferrothorn does get the opportunity to go for the Body Press, looking to clean up the KO on the Lapras here to put Tegan in a 2v1 scenario. A good awareness by Tegan there. She recognized that she needs to go for a double protect to stand a chance. I think Alex is always targeting the Palkia there because you know Palkia can go for Earth Power. That's obviously significantly more damage than something like a uh, body press, right? And so going for the save target, now I wonder if Tegan goes for a triple protect. <laughs> I think if you're Alex, you should just target the Palkia. Yeah, she doesn't offer that trickle. Uh, triple is going to get the knockdown to Palkia. Now the question is whether or not Ferrothorn can survive this end game, but it, it's really tough. The Leaf Seed connects, but once again, this is a plus three Zacian. Uh, you can either go for another sword stance if you're not confident on this next one, KO, and you're worried about Ferrothorn going for a protect. Now Ferrothorn has to make the decision here, do I protect or I just go for a body press? I know that sword stance earlier was so big, and it looks like Tegan is just going to attack into this Zacian here. I mean, does Zacian go for the setup, predicting that protect, like you said, or is it just going to go for an attack here? 
Yeah, it feels pretty safe, I think, to just Sacred Sword. Two Sacred Swords, I imagine, is definitely a KO. A single one here might be enough anyway, so I think no need to risk another Swords Dance saying, yeah, that is enough, you know, ignoring the defense boost. So, uh, I mean, that was a really close game. Like, I, I think both players played really nicely. Love how Tegan played that early game. And in the end, this really felt like it was decided by that critical turn where the Zashun was able to make the decision to go for a Swords Dance, risking a potential Earth Power Body Press double up into that slot. I was thinking Tegan maybe had the opportunity the turn before to Thunderbolt into the uh the Lapras instead and just go for a body press or a leech seed there immediately rather than an iron defense because in the end the iron defense actually didn't really help her at all and no of course body press is able to do a bit more damage with those iron defenses but I mean, that's not going to matter when the Zashian there is just going to one-hit KO it. And, I mean, Alex really recognizing that the Zashian was the key to winning that endgame with the Pharaoh Thor and switching it out earlier to make it so it didn't take a Will-O-Wisp from the Rotom and then cleaning up the KO on the Rotom so the Zashian could come in relatively safe to really just clean up that game there. But that being said, let's get into this game to, to see how this shakes out. I mean, I'm really excited still by Tegan's team, and I love that we got to see the Feral Thorin a little more in action today. So, I mean, let's get to it. We, <laughs> that Feral Thorin, of course, starting out here next to that Grim Snarl and Incineroar and Lapras coming out on Alex's side here. Yeah, I chuckled a little bit, Sierra, because right as you were talking about Ferrothorn, it turns out Tegan actually ends up leading it. So I, I, I like the adjustment here, right? I, I think from Alex's side, uh, Alex recognized, hey, this Rotom is just absolutely going to crush my Amoongus, so I'm not going to lead uh, Amoongus Lapras again because that's actually pretty vulnerable to Grimmsnarl plus the Ferrothorn. Uh, now, Tegan, on the other hand, you typically don't want a Ferrothorn out against a Incineroar because Incineroar can obviously just pressure with something like a Flare Blitz, but obviously you can set up that Reflect and then, you know, Flare Blitz does less damage. Uh, Ferrothorn does feel like more of like an end game Pokemon more than an early game Pokemon because if you lead it, your opponent can just like consistently double up onto it. Uh, it's also a Pokemon Pokemon that's not really going to Dynamax, especially not with Tegan's moveset. So, you know, Alex could just offer something like a fake out into that Ferrothorn slot, get the screens up, and then really go from there. So, Ferrothorn, not exactly a common lead here. We'll see if Tegan's really able to get a couple of maybe early Iron Defenses off, or then you could just body press everything. But this Incineroar is definitely going to be uh, a tricky Pokemon to play against, especially this early on. So, nice lead adjustment by Alex. <laughs> Alex going ahead and going for that first turn Dynamax here with the Lapras. Of course, we saw the light screen is going to be coming up from Tegan. And <laughs> there's no fake out from the Incineroar, so I'm excited to see what it does. Resonance will be hitting into the Ferrothorn, and I'm wondering if Alex did just opt to double into this Ferrothorn yeah, here. You no know, reflect either, so if it's just Flare Blitz, I mean, poor Ferrothorn is out of the field immediately. What is it going to be? It's going to be Taunt, okay? <laughs> taunt instead. All right, opting not to try and take that out, but I mean, Taunt on the Grimstarl now means that since it went for the late screen this turn, there's not going to be a reflect to really save this Ferrothorn from a potential Incineroar Flare Blitz. Yeah, that's uh, I, I think that's a nice middle of the ground play, right? You don't go all in on the Ferrothorn there because if Ferrothorn protects, then uh, Grimstar can disrupt the next turn. So uh, the Taunt, you know, is a move that a lot of players have been running on Incineroar more frequently. That's actually a really good attack to have in this position as well. So Grimstar now in a really awkward spot. Like you fall out, Sierra. Now, Ferrothorn is really left exposed, right? Uh, so as a result, Alex, you know, I think can easily read into this protect on Ferrothorn. Even if Ferrothorn doesn't protect, like, is it really going to risk staying in and going just for something like a body press or an iron defense? Iron defense feels even more risky because Incineroar can always taunt his lap slot. So Alex definitely has a lot of options right now. One of them being even pivoting Incineroar out and just getting Zacian out immediately. Because the thing about Grimstar or Ferrothorn is that these two Pokemon don't do any damage whatsoever, especially against the Zacian under screens. If you get a Swords Dance on that Zacian early, you'll be in great shape. Posing Lapras going for that resonance, hitting again into the Ferrothorn. I mean, not doing any damage due to the Protect. The Incineroar, though, is going for that Flare Blitz, trying to just eliminate this Ferrothorn and not going to be doing anything. The Spirit Break into the Lapras. It will get a special attack drop, which is really nice. I mean, the Grimmsnarl can't do any more setting up, but surely the Spirit Break special attack drops will start to slowly add up on the Lapras as well. 
Yeah, so, you know, Alex really just playing as safe as possible, saying, hey, I, I just want to get rid of this Ferrothor, and Tegan going for a great protect. I love this Rotom switch as well. I think that's exactly what she should do here, uh, because it covers for Alex, you know, trying to really hone in and uh, maybe try to focus too much on the Ferrothor. So, I was thinking in that last turn, Alex had the position to pivot out that Incineroar. You get that Zacian in immediately. Now, imagine if Zacian plus Lapras were up against a Taunted Grimstar and a Ferrothor that just protected, you know? Seems like a pretty free opportunity to Swords Dance, so uh, Alex doesn't end up getting that Zacian. I still think he's in pretty good shape but uh in the end yeah tegan making the really great play to not you know just just go for that body press not protect on turn one and now is in a spot where she's really baiting out the damage i really think this is a great fire thorn switch now so the question here is does alex read into it you could geyser but the thing is if you geysered into it your fair your incinero would do less damage with that max player but it you is you see geyser. that geyser into the <laughs> grim snarl though not predicting the swap on the Ferrothorn swap, but it is going to set the rain. The Incineroar opting to just go for a parting shot instead into the Rotom slot, which is really nice. I mean, this Rotom could be really dangerous, but if it's in a negative one special attack with no way to like build up its special attack, I mean, what can it really do here? Yeah, that's a great point. This is not the nasty plot Rotom heat sets that we often see. It's got Will O Wisp and Ally Switch instead. And uh, those moves have actually been really, really critical for Tegan, uh, you know, throughout a lot of her wins. So they're definitely not bad options by any means, but even a single special attack drop is really, really critical here. So I think nice play by Alex and by Tegan. I really like the switch on Tegan's end. You don't want to give up that Ferrothorn because it's such an essential win condition. And on Alex's side of the field, you know, making sure that he didn't just hone in solely on the Ferrothorn. Because imagine if you just go for a Resonance and a Flare Blitz into the Ferrothorn and Rotom switches in. You know, it's such a good switch in there. So uh, Alex at least sets up the rain. Now you're putting on more pressure with Hydro Pump. You've got this Regieleki out, so Regieleki can keep going for Electro Webs as well. I guess the awkward thing is that this Lapras is multiple stages of decreased special attack, so you might want to consider switching that out into the Incineroar. You also have to respect Rotom Heat, Dynamaxi, and then, you know, Fake Tear Shen against from the Grim Snarl. So uh, this is still definitely a really close game. I mean, not much damage being done in the early turns, and Tegan has a late game Dynamax to play towards, but that Zacian on Alex's side, still such a big threat. I love that you brought up that late game Dynamax. Of course, Lapras being able to set up the Resonance to reduce the amount of damage that Tegan is dealing is really, really nice. But I mean, the Lapras set up the Aurora Veil, set up the Rain, but didn't really deal too much damage other than that. And having the special attack drop so much kind of forced into this swap where Tegan can start putting some more pressure on later in the game. Thunderbolt will come out, hitting into the Grimmsnarl. Another Spirit Break from the Grimmsnarl, though, hitting into the Reggie Aleki this time to get that special attack drop. So every special attack drop on Reggie Aleki, definitely helpful as well, because, you know, those Thunderbolts definitely hurt a little bit. Taunt finally wears off, but uh, not really much you can go for right now anyway. Uh, like, the Taunt did prohibit a potential Fake Years play that last turn, but uh, I, I don't think Tegan really wanted to go for, like, a Fake Years play anyway, especially because of the threat of that Incineroar switching in and that minus one special attack drop on that Rotom Heat. So once again, what's interesting is that this Ferrothorn is out, but we know the Incineroar has Taunt, so Incineroar could always Taunt the Ferrothorn to make sure it doesn't get any Iron Defenses or Leech Seeds off. Uh, taunt really... Taunt and Incineroar are probably, like, the last thing you want to go up against with this Ferrothorn set. Zacian finally is out. Getting that attack boost here. Grimstarl does get to set up the reflect, which <laughs> really nice. It's about time. The Incineroar does opt to go for that taunt into the Ferrothorn. Of course, Tegan did just opt to go for the body press instead and just deal some more chip damage onto this Incineroar, slowly starting to chip it down while regaining its own health with this leftovers. So Alex has finally gotten Zacian in a, in a relatively passive position where there's actually not too much damage from the opposing side. And Tegan's actually just going for damage here. But this makes me a little bit nervous for Tegan's side because Alex now can just go for a sword stance immediately with that Zacian. And I would think maybe parting shot into the Ferrothorn, which covers for Ferrothorn switching into Rotom Heat that turn. So. Yeah, I mean, this is what I wanted to see Alex do a little bit earlier on in the match, given that I think Zacian is so good into this matchup. All you have to do is prevent, you know, a burn from coming out. Now, Tegan still has that Rotom Heat in the back, so that can still put in a lot of work, especially if uh, you're able to, say, lower Zacian's stats. And this is why I really like that fake tears, but might have liked to see Ferrothorn switch out into Rotom a little bit more here. Yeah, definitely risking the Ferrothorn a little bit here, and is going to be taking a lot of damage from that Sacred Sword. 
and the Incineroar will just go for the Parian shot here onto the Grim Snarl. I, I feel it's a little unusual to see the Ferrothorn go for so many attacking moves back to back. I mean, at this point, it is taunted, but even like that, like the past game in this game, really risking that Ferrothorn going for those body presses, especially the first turn in the last game. And I mean, the Ferrothorn still kicking around, but I don't know. I, I'm, it, it scares me a little bit seeing it sit in front of these two strong Pokemon and not being afraid of it. Yeah, definitely. Now that last turn was pretty interesting. I think Tegan probably didn't want to switch into Rotom because she was afraid of the Zacian going for that Sacred Sword onto the Ferrothorn slot because, you know, it still will do a sizable amount of damage and Rotom can't heal itself. And so that's why she stayed in. The Zacian did end up actually going for Sacred Sword rather than something like a Sword Stance immediately. The only awkward thing is, sure, the fake tears into Zacian is nice, but that's not relevant until you actually bring out a special attacker. So the tricky thing right now is Zacian can, you know, get another big attack off here and won't take too much other than maybe a body press from that Ferrothorn, but then it can just switch out later on to get rid of the boosts, or, or the, the stat decreases, I should say. So uh, what's going to be really critical here for Tegan is when do you Dynamax and uh, are you able to actually just like ideally sweep through, right? I think right now what she's trying to do is basically stall out the resonance that was set up earlier by Alex. So fake tears going into the Lapras. The Zacian with that Sacred Sword is going to pick up the Ferrothorn here. Of course, a little bit of Iron Barb's damage, but this spiky boy is going to be going down. Hydro Pump from the Lapras hitting into this Grimmsnarl. Dealing a <laughs> lot of damage with that rain, but unfortunately not quite enough. And Grimstarl just hanging in there with three HP left. Yeah, and one thing that's interesting here is that Tegan actually did not end up bringing that Palkia this time around, actually playing without any restricted Pokemon here, thinking, hey, uh, the electric type damage from the Regieleki is just more important. I, I was wondering, you know, we've seen so many Dynamax Regieleki's already throughout the course of the tournament. I was like, is Tegan going to be yet another player to Dynamax Regieleki? Looks like for now, the answer is no, but... I actually don't think it's a terrible option because you can actually take advantage of the electric terrain here. Uh, either way, you know, it's not often that you see someone not bring their restricted Pokemon, but I think in the context of this matchup, it actually makes a lot of sense. This is the downside I was talking about, though. Sure, you got those fake tiers, you know, drops earlier, but Alex could just protect Lapras, switch out Zacian, and then, you know, switch out Lapras the subsequent turn to get rid of both of those fake tiers drops immediately. I'm excited to see how much this Electroweb... Oh, well, Lapras is going to protect instead. <laughs> I was going to say after those stat drops on this Lapras, seeing how much it was going to take, but Lapras opting instead to go for that protect. So the Electroweb will connect with that Incineroar, dealing a little bit of chip damage, but dropping its speed, but not doing too much else. But the Aurora Belt is going to expire this turn, so... If Tegan wants, she can really start to apply some pressure going forward now that her moves are going to hit for full force. I was going to say, we already saw Tegan lock in her moves. This would have been such a cool turn to actually Dynamax that Regieleki. Go for Fake Tears, Max Lightning. In You, you could Fake Tears, Lapras, Max Lightning, and Sinner, actually. Because then you set up Electric Terrain, and suddenly Regieleki actually is looking pretty good, right? The only resistance to Regieleki on Alex's side of the field is Alex's Regieleki. That Dynamax Regieleki also covers for the option of Incineroar going for Fake Out onto Regieleki. So uh, we already know what Tegan went for this turn. I, You know, it, it's just funny because throughout this tournament, we've seen so many Dynamax Regieleki is I actually thought that was a decent opportunity to go for it. Uh, rather, she's going to end up going for the switch, but I think the problem with this is that Alex can maybe capitalize off it and get more damage than he really should have been able to get away with. So let's see what option he goes for. Regieleki, of course, with that protect, take, oh. sorry, Hydro Pump going into the Regieleki, unfortunately not doing anything. The Flare Blitz, though, will come out from the Incineroar, connecting with the Rotom, Critical hit. I mean, that did a good amount of damage onto that Rotom there and taking a nice chunk of recoil damage well. Okay, let's see. Uh, Tegan is still opting not to Dynamax yet. And, you know, covering the Willow is here covers for Lapras switching out into uh, the Zacian, right? So that definitely makes a lot of sense. Now, Lapras had gone for an attack last turn. So if you're on Alex's side right now, you could easily just protect the Lapras sacrifice the Incineroar or even switch Incineroar out. So Tegan is being very patient with her Dynamax and I wonder if that end is en gonna end up costing her because it feels like she had opportunities to Dynamax these last couple of turns but I also think she wants to conserve this Regieleki and not Max it so that she can Electroweb that Zacian. 
Mm -hmm. The late game Dynamax is so strong, but at some point, if <laughs> Dean doesn't go for that Dynamax, could actually miss out on the opportunity here. But, I mean, that Lapper is going for the Protect. No damage being taken, and that KO is going to get picked up on the Incineroar here. So, I'm assuming we might see this Zacian coming back out, or potentially maybe the Reggie Lucky to start trying to get some speed control on Alex's side of the field here, which here it is. Yep, exactly as you said. I think the reason Alex doesn't want to bring in the Zacian immediately is because you don't want to just eat up an Electro Web and, a, you know, a big attack here. So Alex, you know, wanting to drop the speeds of Tegan's Pokemon first before bringing out that Zacian and then ideally sweeping with Zacian in this end game. Regieleki going for the Protect. Alex's Regieleki will go for that Electro Web, connecting with that Rotom Heat, a little bit of chip and dropping that speed stat here. Lapras now <laughs> able to hit that Hydro Pump and that's oh. really gonna hurt. Rodom keeps going down here and I mean, Ow Tegan is left with two Pokemon. What's really nice though is she hasn't used her Dynamax and that Regieleki is still at full health, but it's definitely getting to be a little, a little scary here. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, she's still not Dynamaxing. I'm curious if she's just forgotten that she hasn't maxed yet in this game because it, it feels like she's had multiple opportunities to do so at this point. And I mean, with how long this game has gone, I, I could definitely see that being the case. But either way, that was a big knockout onto the Rotom because that was actually the best answer against Sashian earlier. Mm -hmm. Electro Web from the opposing Regieleki is going to clean up that KO on the Grim Snarl. Finally, it did take a special defense drop from a fake tears first. Volt Switch coming out from Regieleki, cleaning up that KO there. I really hope that this Dynamax is being saved or it gets recognized in the next turn or so because <laughs> Regieleki is taking some really big damage here. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I just, I, I think that's game over, to be honest. I mean, yeah. Reggie Lucky can't pick up a double KO here unless I guess you go for a crit Electro Web. It just, yeah, it felt like there were multiple opportunities to either Dynamax, Reggie Lucky, or Rotom, and then great play by Alex to double up onto that Rotom. But yeah, you can, you can see that Dynamax button still there. So uh, in the end, I, I think Tegan may have just forgotten that she didn't have, or, or like she still had her Dynamax, because I think maxing here would have greatly changed the outcome of this matchup. So. Wow, I mean, tough.